The voice you hear is computer generated. The following is a testimonial of Brian Keith Waugh, and I quote, In my interest about the Baldachin of St. Peter, I considered how the image is related biblically, and concluded that the Baldachin of St. Peter is an image of the power and authority of Roman Catholicism. Then one night, I saw a dream. While I was somewhat asleep, there was a struggle, and this realization came to me, and appeared partially engraved before my eyes. It was obstructed by something threatening in a cloudy darkness, but I understood the engraving intuitively. It says, The image of power of the Universal Church of Rome for ecclesiastical and civil authority is the image of spiritual leprosy in the world. The 1439 Council of Florence of the Roman Catholic Church says, We also define that the Holy Apostolic See and the Roman Pontiff holds the primacy over the whole world and the Roman Pontiff is the successor of Blessed Peter Prince of the Apostles, and that he is the true Vicar of Christ, the head of the whole Church and the Father and Teacher of all Christians, and to him was committed in Blessed Peter the full power of tending, ruling and governing the whole Church, as is contained also in the Acts of Ecumenical Councils and in the Sacred Canons. The 1563 Council of Trent of the Roman Catholic Church ordains, therefore, and enjoins, that the Sacred Canons, and all the General Councils, as also all other apostolic ordinances, published in favor of ecclesiastical persons, of the liberty of the Church, and against the violators thereof, all which it also renews by this present decree, be exactly observed by all men. And it admonishes the emperor, kings, republics, princes, and all in each of whatsoever state and dignity they be, that the more bountifully they are adorned with temporal goods, and with power over others, the more religiously should they respect whatsoever is of ecclesiastical right, as belonging especially to God, and as being under the cover of his protection. After the 1965 Vatican II Council called for ecumenical dialogue with Protestants who are considered as separated brethren, the revised 1983 Code of Canon Law of the Roman Catholic Church says in Canon 1315 Section 1, A person who has legislative power can also issue penal laws, within the limits of his competence by reason of territory or of persons, moreover, he can by his own laws also strengthen with an appropriate penalty, a divine law, or an ecclesiastical law issued by a higher authority. And in Canon 1369 it says, A person who in a public show or speech, in published writing, or in other uses of the instruments of social communication utters blasphemy, gravely injures good morals, expresses insults, or excites hatred or contempt against religion or the church is to be punished with a just penalty. Apostle Paul says of those who prepare the gospel in behalf of the faithful, we are always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. The Popes of the Universal Church of Rome claim to be the Vicar of Christ. The word Vicar has changed in dictionaries since the 19th century to mean representative, that is to say, 
the Pope is the representative of Christ. But, the original meaning in Latin, vicarius, or Italian, vicario, is not representative, instead it means substitute, that is, the Pope claims to be the substitute of Christ. The Church of Rome says that Apostle Peter is the true vicar of Christ. Yet, it's evident that their reasoning is not sound, it is not based upon truths in the Christian Bible about Jesus Christ and the Apostle Peter. Instead, it appears to be inherent from an influence of Imperial Rome, an effort to maintain the sovereignty of Rome over the world through Christianity. Rome always had an interest in the religious economy of Israel. When Jesus Christ resurrected his friend Lazarus who had been dead for four days, those who witnessed it went and told the Jewish clergy. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Apostle Peter, near the time of his martyrdom in Rome, implies that he was present truth, meaning that as a chief shepherd, he was truth present among fellow Christians while he was alive. Apostle Peter is truth in the Gospel, and Apostle Paul says that they fulfill the word of God. This means that they have a part in prophetic truths. But, pertaining to faith, Jesus Christ says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is the word of God, and all prophecy is in him, and all prophecy is of him. But no person in prophecy has been made or should be considered as a substitute for him. Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul ensured that their gospel doctrine would be preserved. Apostle Peter says, Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. An Apostle Paul says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the Gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, 
and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. As Vicar of Christ, the Pope claims to be the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Accordingly, the Pope made himself to be the image of the invisible God, the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of baptism represented by a great fish, which swallowed the prophet Jonah. Therefore, he claims as a Christian to be the spirit of life, and as the Vicar of Christ, he claims to be the crucified and resurrected Son of God, who is the quickening spirit. It is self-evident that the regalia of the idol Dagon the fish god is not sanctified, that is to say, it is not set apart for a holy use based on truth in the Bible. It is not as King David, who received the crown of the Ammonite king. It is a faulty representation based on another way. The water supply of the Ammonites was dispossessed by Israel, which represents the life of the Spirit of God. They were also under forced labor for Israel with saws, axes, and sharp tools, which are also used to cut down and destroy in order to make idols. This indicates they contrived another way for Israel with idolatry. They would form and build an idol of Israel, as if first drying them out like bricks, which are hardened by fire, to purge them of the Spirit of God, which is the nature of spiritual leprosy, and they were punished accordingly. As Vicar of Christ, the Pope claims to be head of all principality and power, which includes the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Christ is the head because he is the image of the invisible God in whom we live, and move, and have our being. And he was made sin and a curse by crucifixion and still bears the wounds, which is for his work of divinity. This claim of the Pope transcends the Son to the Father, that is to say, he is the Vicar of the Holy Father. This is indicated by the images at the foot of his throne, which shows a serpent, a lion, dragon, and a lizard or basiliscus lizard, that is, a Jesus lizard because it can walk on water, which is located in the Western Hemisphere. According to this evidence, the Pope claims that all powers, signs, and lying wonders are at his feet, and he rules over them in a way that transcends a follower of Christ, he claims to rule over them as the Vicar of God. And thereby, he claims to be God the Father, the Creator, and Reconciler, who is all in all. Apostle Paul warned, saying to the Church of Christ Jesus, I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, ye might well bear with him. In another place, Apostle Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Accordingly, Apostle Paul says that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God to salvation. This power is of the glory of the name of Jehovah God. Moses has said to God, And now, I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering, and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law of faith, that is to say, the ceremonial law of Moses was fulfilled in the body of Jesus Christ. And according to the law of faith, God covenants to do miraculous acts for salvation with Israel. And through Jesus Christ, this gift of the Spirit is for all people who believe he is the Redeemer who was resurrected. Apostle Peter says of the Gentile converts, God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. The ceremonial law of ordinances in Jesus Christ, by his sanctification, was nailed to the cross. Yet, it is evident that they were raised with him in the writings of the gospel as a tutor to bring us to Christ. Thereby, Jesus Christ is referred to as the Lamb of God, and Christ our Passover. Yet, Jesus said to the woman of Samaria at the well that salvation is of the Jews. Therefore, knowledge and understanding of salvation given to the Jews and the meaning of the ceremonial observances with sacrifices are referenced in the Gospels as fulfilled in the body of Jesus Christ. Accordingly, the ceremonial law, that is, the observances of the great feasts with sacrifices, meat and drink offerings, new moons, and Sabbath days, is knowledge and understanding of the way of faith that distinguishes the power of God from the power of idolatry. By various interpretations, the knowledge and understanding of faith are under attack by the fiery darts of the wicked, which require a defense by the shield of faith. The shield of faith is Jesus, who was resurrected from the dead according to the righteousness of God in the Holy Bible, according to the prophecies of God. Jesus Christ says, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Before Roman Catholicism, Apostle Paul says as a citizen of Rome, Now we beseech you brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The book of Genesis says that in the beginning, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. This included not only the earth for mankind, but even the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is of the omniscience of God. Therefore, Adam and his wife, who were made in the image and likeness of the omniscient God, were made knowledgeable of evil by the tree of knowledge. But, God commanded them not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for if they did, they would surely die. And the Bible says this about the creation of mankind. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, 
Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth! Yet, the woman was deceived by Satan through a serpent which he possessed and caused his words to be spoken through it, saying that if she ate from the tree of knowledge, she would be like God knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Accordingly, mankind sinned by disobedience in the knowledge of good and evil. And instead of them becoming immortal gods, they were condemned to death, and they lost their dominion over the earth. Yet, God had provided for the remission of sins, which is restorative by repentance and forgiveness, if mankind would fall to the deception of the old serpent called the devil and Satan. And in judgment God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Therefore, Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Meaning, she is the mother of all from that time forward who believe and live by faith. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Mankind was now subject to the influences of Satan. Therefore, they would act upon a notion to eat from the tree of life for self-preservation, which would perpetuate their life of good confounded with evil. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. When they ate the fruit of good confounded with evil, sin was conceived in them. Sin is the transgression of the law. The word sin means to miss the mark, as if a target traveled towards. Therefore, the destined goal of God is not reached. In other words, when mankind sinned by disobedience in the knowledge of good and evil, which is of the omniscience of God, they could not be filled with all the fullness of God. Although Adam and Eve lost their dominion over the earth to the old serpent called the devil and Satan, through the redemption of Jesus Christ, the scriptures say, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. For not only were all things created very good in the beginning by Christ that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or power, all things were created by him, and for him. And therefore, they are redeemed by his paternal redemption from the garden of Gethsemane to the crucifixion, where he was lifted up from the earth, suspended and cut off between earth and heaven, as if unacceptable and disapproved by God until death, by which, he became a curse, body, and soul. Yet, motivated by love, Jesus Christ was in obedience to God unto the law of faith, by which he was sanctified to bear the judgment for sin as a substitute. And yet, he did this in order to justify restoration of eternal life for all who learn of him, and believe in him, and are repentant. Isaiah prophesied that the Almighty Father has said this about his only begotten Son. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And the Holy Spirit of truth was a witness as power for his good works of salvation in behalf of mankind, while he lived among us, according to the will of the Almighty Father. Therefore, Jesus Christ was resurrected in righteousness as the author and finisher of our faith. It was in order that we may be restored to the will of the Lord from the beginning. What is the will of the Lord for mankind? The Bible says that God made mankind, both male and female, in the image and likeness of God, a little lower than the angels, in order to become equal to the angels with immortality. Yet, moreover, God made mankind to be filled with all the fullness of God. For each individual soul is the offspring of God, 